This world is a crazy place, and it seems to be only getting crazier by the day. So please spare a thought then in your hearts for the supervillains of the comic book world. With the globe in all the turmoil it already is, what are they expected to do? It's not like they can contribute any more insanity than what's going on out there. It's just hard to be your best chaotic self when the entire of the outside world is already dealing with an oversaturation of excessive chaos. Look, all I'm saying is if I was a megalomaniacal madman with dreams of global domination, I'd be feeling pretty down on myself right now. In fact, I'd probably just give up and quit the whole bad guy shtick once and for all. And you know what? That's exactly what these 10 supervillains did. I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 times supervillains quit. 10. Dr. Octopus Settles Down Spider-Man Life Story Spider-Man Life Story is a decade-spanning epic with an excellent premise. What if Spider-Man, along with everyone else in the Marvel Universe, aged in real time? The fact that Peter Parker began his crime-fighting career in 1962 but remains in his mid-20s in 2020 is efficient for maintaining a certain status quo, but ignores a plethora of intriguing storylines that come with a superhero growing older. One I idea that life story really focused in on was the fact that as the world changes around them people change too. It's not just a case of giving each character grey hair and wrinkles, writer Chip Zdarsky ensures that everyone gets a complete character arc, showing how they're affected by the ups and downs of everyday life. Inspired by an actual storyline in which Dr. Octopus tried to marry Peter's Aunt May, Zdarsky decided to give Otto Octavius a brief period of retribution in his life. After suffering a heart attack in his 70s, Doc Ock realizes that there's more to life than using his big metal tentacles to rob banks and fight Spider-Man. He is reformed into a respectable citizen, taking up a job in Reed Richards' laboratory and settling down with his newfound love, May Parker. For a while, Peter and his Uncle Otto so even work alongside each other as lab partners. Yeah. Sadly, this doesn't last forever. The death of Aunt May had a profound effect on Otto, and by 2019 he was back to his villainous, octopus-themed shenanigans. 9. Mr. Freeze Refuses to Escape Arkham Arkham Manor Ah, uh, ain't it just the way. You spend your whole life fighting criminals on the streets only to suddenly find they've all moved in with you. At least, that's what happens to Bruce Wayne in the Arkham Manor story arc. His own home, Wayne Manor, is chosen as the new holding ground for inmates of the recently destroyed Arkham Asylum. As if that's not bad enough, a series of murders forces Batman to go undercover and investigate his old homestead. Growing a, frankly, very impressive mustache and calling himself Jack Shaw, he ends ends up recruiting the incarcerated Mr. Freeze to help him take down a seemingly jokerized version of Clayface. In return, he sets Mr. Freeze free from his cell, knowing that he can't compromise his secret identity and that Freeze would be relatively easy to capture once again. Thankfully, this isn't a concern. Once they get outside of the manor, Freeze just lays down on the ground and begins making snow angels. As it turns out, he has no intention to leave Arkham at all. He's happy to remain locked up for the rest of his life. Not because he feels he deserves it after the atrocities he'd committed, but simply because he has nowhere to go. Which is weirdly sad, but also weirdly quite nice. 8. The Lizard Goes Back to College – The Amazing Spider-Man Dr. Kurt Connors has been through a lot in life, from losing his arm, to transforming into a giant lizard, to eating his own son in a blind rage. If anyone could use a fresh start, it's him. Despite all of the terrible things he's done while in his horrifying lizard form, Connors still manages to get himself a job at Empire State University, returning to his roots as a science teacher. He's learned from his grisly mistakes and takes precautions to ensure that they will never be repeated. He implants an inhibitor chip in his neck, which is a genius foolproof strategy which has never, ever gone wrong before. <laughs> Dr. Octopus which freezes him in his tracks if he ever tries to harm another person while in his lizard form. You might wonder then why he stays in his lizard form at all, especially if he's teaching classes to, you know, regular non lizified students. Well, let me assure you there's a very simple explanation. He recently brought his wife and child, yes, the one he ate, back to life, but the resurrection had the unfortunate side effects of making them half lizard in appearance. In order to make them feel more comfortable with their skin, 
gaily new look, he remains in lizard mode out of a sense of solidarity. It is very clearly the most rational action and I will not hear a damn word to the contrary! 7. Judge Death takes a mental health day. Judge Dread. Judge Death is a judge from an alternate Earth who realised that the ultimate crime was being alive, and the only sufficient sentence was death. After all, it is pretty much impossible for anyone to commit a crime when everybody is dead. Now you can't argue with that logic. You could, however, argue with his methods. After he teamed up with his fellow judges Fire, Fear and Mortis, and killed everyone on the planet. Hungry for even more justice, the four judges hopped dimensions and attempted to do it all over again. Thanks to a certain judge named Dread, they were defeated and locked up. In the one shot, the judge who laughs, Death manages to escape his cell. Surprisingly though, he doesn't go straight to Mega City 1 and begin purging it of all life, but instead pops into the prison psychiatrist for a quick therapy session. Now, as it turns out, Judge Death has been having a bit of trouble sleeping, something that even the personification of Death needs to do, apparently. Dr. Heiser helps him get to the bottom of his problems, and as a thank you, he reaches inside her chest and stops her beating heart. Yikes. 6. Loki becomes a Parisian street hustler, Thor. If there's two things you can depend on in comics, it's that no one ever really dies, and Loki will always be trying to take over Asgard. And this comic proves both of those facts. Alongside Norman Osborn's cabal of supervillains known, fittingly, as the Cabal, Loki organised a hostile takeover of his father's kingdom. However, Norman's methods were a little more violent than Loki's usual tricks. The complete and utter destruction of Asgard was not really what the God of Mischief had been hoping for, and he turned against the Cabal to defend his hometown. It was too little too late, as Loki was brutally murdered by the Void, the destructive counterforce of the century. Along with anyone who's ever seen one of their favourite comic characters die before, Thor knew this wasn't really the end for Loki. After removing his name from the Book of Hell, Loki had cheated death and guaranteed himself a never-ending line of reincarnations, and so Thor went searching for his brother. However, when he found him, he was no longer the chaotic trickster god that had caused the world so much trouble. He was just a young street hustler living in Paris. And totally honestly, he could have happily spent his entire life hustling along the banks of the Seine, unaware of his past, if Thor hadn't reminded him of his almighty powers and Ponchon for being a general nuisance. 5. Joker runs for local government. Batman White Knight. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you used lethal force to pin down a man with a history of mental problems and shove antipsychotic drugs down his throat? Because Batman knows exactly what happens, and he found out the hard way. After Batman does exactly this to the Joker, something truly unprecedented happens. The Joker becomes sane. Using this newfound sanity to its full advantage, Joker starts to live his life as Jack Napier, stand-up citizen and anti-Batman crusader. He manages to convince almost the entirety of Gotham that Batman is the number one danger to their city. Napier manages to become a beloved public figure, coming alarmingly close to being made councilman. He even manages to rekindle his friendship with his old flame, Harley Quinn, who had also given up on a life of crime years ago. 4. Venom destroys himself to create a new universe. Venom The End If you haven't read Marvel's recent one-shot Venom The End, do yourself a favour and find a copy. Although the entire story is told in a single 30-page comic, it is one of the most ambitious, psychedelic and existentially profound science fiction tales of any medium in recent memory. The story spans millions upon trillions of years, and shows us a future in which Venom is the last remaining hope hope for biolife in our universe. With the rise of artificial intelligence, the cosmos is taken over by constantly advancing robots, wiping out all biological beings. The symbiote known as Venom is all that stands in the way of the complete extinction of nature, and he is not letting go easy. You see, Venom is not only a symbiote, but a living genetic codex. He retains a piece of DNA from everyone he has ever bonded to, realising he can never truly save this corpse of a universe universe, as he puts it, he ultimately tears himself inside out, and creates a brand new universe from the DNA of the old one. 3. The Helphibians Decide Not to Breed 2000 AD 
When the creepy, toad-like, humanoid monsters known as the Helphibians rise up from the depths of a highly polluted lake, they have one thing on their mind. Breeding. You see, all of their men are dead and they need some, uh, DNA help from the local populace. Making their way into a nearby village, they go on a killing spree, viciously murdering everyone they see as competition. Eventually, the Helphibians find their bounty, every one of the village's male specimens, all crowded into a pub by the fitting name of the Randy Old Goat. There's only one problem. All of the village's male specimens are, frankly, more horrible to look at than the Helphibians. You see, the once proud, respectable patrons of this rural pub have been slowly mutated by the ravages of time and excessive alcohol. The Helphibians are repulsed beyond measure and sadly return home, accepting their fate as the last of their species. At least they have higher standards than my ex-girlfriend. Way! Oh no, he didn't! Although seriously, Cindy, if you see this, please call me back. Please, I miss you. 2. Boomerang moves in with Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. When Peter Parker realizes that Fred Boomerang Myers is his new roommate, it looks like it's going to add to the long list of complications that come with living life as Spider-Man. It's tough enough to hide your secret identity from the people you live with, but when one of those people also happens to be a supervillain, it's a whole new level of tricky. As it turns out, Peter has little to no need to be worried. Because ever since he inadvertently helped take down a Hydra helicarrier, Boomerang has been making an effort to be more of an anti-hero than a straight-up baddie. He even tries his best to be a good friend to Peter, taking him along to the pop-up with no name, a bar patronized exclusively by Spider-Man's rogues gallery. When Boomerang finds that he has a magical treasure map implanted in his memory by a mysterious old man, he even teams up with Spidey to go on a mystical artifact treasure hunt. It is a beautiful, ongoing bromance that I am 100% on board for. 1. Galactus chickens out. Fantastic Four. Now, while he has played the role of supervillain many times, Galactus was always intended to be sort of beyond good and evil. He doesn't expressly wish to harm any other living beings, and he has no desire to rule over the world or the universe. He just has a phenomenal appetite, one that can only be sated by absorbing the elemental life force of an entire planet. He's also, as it turns out, a massive chicken. While the coming of Galactus is one of the most iconic storylines in all of Marvel history, it's surprising to remember that it's only three issues long, and yet it's known for being one of the Fantastic Four's most epic of victories. But maybe it shouldn't be. Not to take away from the fact that they prevent Doomsday, but Marvel's first family do so thanks to a very risky bluff and Galactus's almighty cowardice. After the Human Torch travels through Infinity to retrieve the Ultimate Nullifier, a weapon that could destroy an entire universe, Mr. Fantastic simply shows it to the giant alien and basically says, hey, I'm gonna use this if you don't piss off. Not only does Galactus off, but he promises to never come back to Earth again. Sometimes that's all it takes to defeat the Devourer of Worlds. Confidence, a barefaced lie, and a weapon you have absolutely no idea how to use. And there you have it folks, 10 times supervillains quit. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at youslidedogu. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.